there's another, even more geometric way of thinking about the tangent space of a manifold at a point. So let me redraw one of the pictures we had earlier of maybe a little patch of a manifold, something like this, and here's the point C. Another way of thinking about the tangent space at this point is to look at curves. So here is the domain R, and I'm going to look at a curve from R to RK. And in fact, actually, the curve is going to be from, from R to M, satisfying. First of all, it has to be differentiable for any of this to make sense. You'll see in a moment why. Satisfying the condition that at the initial point in time, gamma of 0 is exactly the point C. And um, gamma is differentiable. Let me just write that out explicitly. And in fact, all we really need is that gamma is differentiable at 0. And so what does this look like? If I took this curve, let, let me draw the domain in a slightly different color just so that we can compare these two. The curve gamma looks something maybe like this. It goes through on M, and then it passes through C at some point in time. And that point in time is exactly 0. And what we can do is we can take the derivative of this function gamma. And in fact, we can look at the span of all such gamma from the set of real numbers to m that are differentiable and satisfy gamma of 0 equals c. So this is a huge set. We're looking at all possible curves, all, as long as they're differentiable and they pass through c. So we can look at the span of all of the vectors gamma prime 0. Now, in terms of our earlier notation, this is exactly the same thing as the differential at the point 0 applied to gamma at the vector. Remember, this is now a matrix. In fact, it's a k by 1 matrix at the vector 1. There's only one vector in, in it, there's only one unit vector in R, and that unit vector we denote by 1. So what we're doing is we're looking at the set of all of these vectors after we take the derivative. So for example, this curve maybe has a vector that looks something like this, and that's the image. Here's the point 0, and here's the vector 1. So this vector here, this is gamma prime 0. That's the derivative of gamma at the point 0, and it's some vector in the tangent space of rk at the point c. So, so note that gamma prime 0 is an element of the tangent space of rk at the point c. And the claim is that this let me write this explicitly. The claim is that this equals the tangent space of the manifold at the point C. So we can look at all of these curves and then take their derivatives. And if we do, and if we do this for all such possible curves, then we indeed get the tangent space of M at C. But this is kind of difficult to work with. The set of all curves is highly infinite dimensional. So we need something more manageable to work with. And one thing that we can do is we can put an equivalence relation on the set of such curves. And the equivalence relation will say that gamma is equivalent to delta. And these are both differentiable curves from R to M, if and only if. First of all, their points agree at 0. And secondly, so this is the first condition, and gamma prime 0 equals delta prime 0. So we identify any two curves. They can be completely different. Let me illustrate this with another example. 
here's maybe some delta, they can be completely different everywhere else, except when you get really close to C, the tangent vectors have to agree. So this tangent vector and that one must be the same. So here's the image of delta, and the blue is the image of gamma. So under this equivalence relation, it actually turns out that the set of such vectors after you mod out this equivalence relation is finite dimensional. That's kind of a surprise already. Um, and it also equals this. It's actually not difficult to see that the span of these vectors is a subset of the tangent space at M. And the reason for that is because if we Let's, let's do this by, for instance, thinking about coordinate charts. If we take a coordinate chart and we place it at the point C, so let me just draw this maybe somewhere here. So here's my coordinate chart. Here's phi inverse of C. Then what we can do is we can map this path forward here. And because this path is contained in M, I can use the inverse of this coordinate patch to give a path in this open subset. And that path satisfies the condition that at 0, it goes to phi inverse c. Now what we can do is we can take the derivative of that path in here. So let me draw this. I'm not going to write the proof because this is part of an exercise. I just want to illustrate the idea. So then this path gamma here gets pushed forward to some path in here. And it has its own vector at that point, at phi inverse c. And then that vector is in the tangent space at the point phi inverse c. And by definition of the tangent space at m, that gets pushed forward to a vector exactly in this subset of the tangent space of rk at c. So it's easy to see that this containment holds. So this direction is easy. What's perhaps a little bit more difficult to see is that if you give me any vector in the tangent plane at the point C of M, then I can construct a curve that passes through the point C and its derivative is equal to that vector that I started with. This is also an exercise, but I sort of want to give the idea because it's very geometrically nice. So here, let me draw um, an open set. I just, I just want to make that picture a little bit bigger. So here's phi inverse c. So let me draw this patch again. Again, many of the ideas behind manifolds and the theorems regarding them essentially come from the theorems in Euclidean space. And we, all we do is we use coordinate patches to transfer those theorems. We'll see this theme over and over again as we study them. So we have this here. And now let's suppose we have a vector, um, some vector. Let's just call it v. Let's put it in green. So imagine you have some vector v. By definition of that vector being in the tangent space, it comes from some vector here. Let's call that vector u. This means that v equals d phi inverse c u. Sorry, phi applied to the vector u. Now that we have an open subset of the Euclidean plane, and we have a vector u here, we can draw the straight line that goes through u, that goes through phi inverse c, and it has derivative u. So I'm not going to write down the formula for that vector. Let's call, sorry, for that path. Let's call that path, for instance, omega. So omega, as a function of t, has to satisfy the condition that omega of 0 equals phi inverse c, and omega prime at 0 equals u. And it's pretty clear from this picture that we can do this at least for some amount of time around the point 0. 
there's a small technicality that we have to think about a function from all of R. And if we let this go, for instance, if this was a constant time, a constant velocity path, then it would leave this open set in a finite amount of time if this open set is small. So the way we do that fix is just by using a bump function concentrated at some region near the point phi inverse c. And I'll leave you to do that from the exercises. But now that we have such a path, what we can do is, so this gives us a path here. That's the path omega. And omega goes from r to u. Uh, I hope that that notation is not too confusing. Let me draw big u a little bit more larger. That's the open set. And then we can compose with phi. This is differentiable by construction. This is differentiable. In fact, notice that even if I didn't just want differentiable, it's, it's smooth um, if I use the appropriate smooth bump functions. So we get a smooth path in here, and we apply this differentiable function here, and that gives us a path here. And you should check that its derivative does coincide with the vector v. And that just follows from a simple application of the chain rule. So this is just another way of visualizing what the tangent space of a manifold is, this time in terms of differentiable curves that pass through c in m, and then you take their derivatives exactly when that path reaches the point c.